Shall we start, sir? Yes, we can. Good afternoon, everyone. I heartily welcome all of you in the Langley's online lecture series, day seven, second session. At the outset, we, the team of Langley, need to thank all the participants who have joined with us by logging Zoom application regularly, and those who are watching, enjoying, and learning with us live on Facebook and YouTube channel, Langley's Educators. We have been receiving. overwhelming response from all over india and abroad as well thank you very much for your academic support and blessings nationally and internationally acclaimed academicians are going to deliver their talks on various aspects of language and literature on on forthcoming days i assure you i will try my best to accommodate most of the scholars during this lockdown period in addition to that it's not the end of the lecture series it's just the beginning we will arrange such lecture series every now and then we are giving unique certificates to each and every participants by adding the entire uh, uh, speaker says photo on it our designer is working on the certificate very soon after probably after uh, 3rd of may you will receive the google form link but participants need to fill the google form and send their zoom participation screenshot or youtube channel language educators uh, subscription screenshot where you have watched all the videos and send this screenshot to e language motivators at the rate gmail.com kindly keep in touch don't forget to subscribe the channel so that you will get uh, further notification so let's learn or, or unlearn and relearn together uh dear friends uh, in uh, today's session we have with us an author poet translator editor blogger and a freelance journalist dr umesh jaddai sir he is a member bos in english sp pune university pune has been in academia for more than 25 years he is an associate professor research supervisor and coordinator of research center working in the post graduate department of english s n arts dj malpani commerce and b n sarda science college sangamner as a resource person he has contributed to several seminars conferences workshops at national and international levels pragmatics communication studies films and theater are his area of interest he has plays poems short stories and translated works on his credit besides uh, the reference books and articles he has authored and edited one bhk.com uh, he has written one play the, the title of the play is one bhk.com by an anthology of poems in print form to mention but uh, but a few are some of his notable works his short story partner was honored as a, a story of the week by w 
by www.storystar.com, an American online portal. A, a published author, he is associated with many prestigious publishers like a Penguin Company, Orient Black Swan, www.storystar.com, uh, story and so many publications. And he and the reputed Marathi newspapers like Lok Sakta, Sakar, and Maharashtra Times. Without further delay, may I invite Dr. Umesh <coughs> Jatai sir to deliver his uh, talk on a very interesting topic today, films and communication studies, a model in the making. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Krishan and team Langlet for this opportunity during especially the lang lockdown period. Uh, it's a great pleasure and honor uh, to be here using this platform of Langlet, of uh, eLangLate motivators. I welcome all the participants to this presentation on films and communication studies, a model in the making. Before that, let me appreciate the efforts and endeavors taken up by Dr. Prashant, a young dynamic talent, a friend uh, who has offered this platform to all the participants, speakers from all over India. So thank you very much once again, Dr. Prashant. May I give it a start? Yes, yes sir. Okay, before I start again, uh, am I visible and audible? Yes, sir. Okay, thank, thank you. Much. Thank you so much. So here we go, dear participants. Once again, greetings to all and welcome to the presentation on films and communication studies, a model in the making. Dear friends, the topic is films and communication studies. So obviously, the title indicates that it's a bifocal topic. Two focal points are there. One is films and the other one is communication studies. Uh, films are used as a medium to study communication. And there is a lot of communication in films. Both the areas are interrelated. A kind of model of communication in films uh, is an attempt. The present deliberation uh, is a way towards that model. We are trying to explore these two fields and to evolve if possible. In the course of time, the model may be evolved, but it's in the process. But whatever stage it is at, I would like to share uh, at this right platform for such models and such presentations. So thank you once again. And I take you to this presentation. You see, uh, I don't say that there are no models in communication studies. There have been some existing theories and models in communication studies. And the same is the case of films. Films also have their own theories and own models. We have different models in communication studies, which may be used to study communication in films. But you see that every model is not evolved, derived, and formulated basically to study communication in movies. Most of the models are derived and evolved, formulated for different purposes with different objectives. So the objective of the model in the making is to study communication in films. Films can be used as a medium of communication. Films can be used as a medium to teach communication skills and all. That is true. That has been going on. There have been some existing theories and models, I repeat, in communication studies. There have been some existing theories and models in film studies, but we are trying to uh, uh, explore a kind of model uh, that is basically centered around communication within a film, communication in a film. So that is the thing. Uh, you see that in this bifocal kind of presentation, uh, we see that as communication study has got a wide range, film studies also has got a wide range. From a TikTok movie to a full-fledged movie, 
there's a wide range of films. And so one model may not be that applicable to the study of communication in movies. We may even require different models to study different kinds of films. So keeping this in view, it's an attempt to go for a model, explore if we can evolve it and all that. Dear friends, see uh, a TikTok movie lasts for, lasts for a few seconds. So it's a punch-centered film. We can understand. There's a punch. And to bring out that punch, whatever techniques that can be used in a movie are used over there. In a full-fledged movie, the things are different, the techniques are different. So as the length of the movie varies, as the theme of the film varies, as the treatment of the film varies, communication varies. Communication varies, it means verbal communication, non-verbal communication, and a lot of ethos that encompasses music, lights, costumes, makeup, and whatnot. There are so many things in films which come out with their own communication. When we think of- Let me know, sir, when I need to share the slide. Uh, yes, 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 I'll, I'll let you. Uh, this is just beginning, and then once we'll go to the slide. Okay. Uh, so, uh, thus every film, every type of film, uh, every uh, uh, kind of film in a sense, from TikTok movie, from a very short film to a long film, communication operates differently. And so a model that can accommodate this variation, these variables of communication is essential. There are some existing models and theories I have already mentioned. We can take a, a short review of all uh, those theories and models. But remember, this is going to be just a brief review and not more than that. Otherwise, uh, the, in the stipulated time, in the time given, we won't be able to give justice to the present topic. Uh, so we go for now the presentation. Slide number one is a welcome slide. I take you to slide number two. Prashant, please slide number two. Wait, sir. Wait, I need to check. Wait, okay. Sir. Okay, fine, fine. So uh, we start with an argument, first of all. Theorizing knowledge makes a deliberation systematic and an all-encompassing kind of thing. Very true. But practicalizing the knowledge keeps the deliberation simple and interesting. When we theorize any presentation, it becomes definitely systematic. It encompasses different kinds of components, elements. And on the other hand, the other view is that rather than theorizing, if we can practicalize our presentation that can remain simple and interesting. Hence, to theorize or to practicalize, I had this dilemma in the mind before I wanted to make this presentation. But I decided to go for the second one, that is, you see, using an inductive approach. Slide number two. Thank you, Dr. Prashant, for sharing this PowerPoint presentation. See slide number two, uh, it has got this argument. Uh, I have already uh, read that out. So from theory to practical is a deductive approach. And from practical to theory is an inductive approach. We go for the second one, you see. So that through the practical experiences, examples, uh, we can reach some kind of theoretical uh, say a model or uh, anything like that uh, eventually at the end. So it's an attempt uh, to practicalize the things and uh, to take you to this inductive approach from practical to theory of the presentation, films and communication studies, a model in the making. Let's go for slide number three. See, there are some upcoming areas and trends in communication studies. As I mentioned earlier, that will take just a brief 
review of what has already been done in these two areas. See, it's a bifocal kind of presentation, communication studies and films. Both are uh, different kinds of films. Of course, they are interrelated, no doubt about that. They have their own existing theories and models. I have tried to mention a few of them, not all, to make it clear. And it's just giving them a mention and taking a brief review of the same. You see. So in the upcoming uh, uh, area and trends, in the next slide, you see, in the next slide, uh, we see that communication studies and the reality that is around us. We live in an augmented reality, you see. So we have a real world and virtual world. At present, we are dealing with that. We have our physical reality around us from our homes we are working. So this is physical reality around us and the virtual world that is in front, right in front of us on the screen. So this is augmented reality. So we live in this augmented reality. So nature of communication varies. It's not like a real life communication. It's not like our day-to-day -day communication. In augmented reality, communication, the components of communication are different and the way of operating, operation of communication is also different. We live sometimes in virtual reality entirely. Uh, for example, in a mobile game, any game that we play online, uh, so that is entirely a virtual world, any animation movie, the characters in the movie, that is an entirely uh, virtual world as such. We sometimes live in the mixed reality where AR and VR, augmented reality and virtual reality are put together. Uh, then sometimes there is extended reality. It's an umbrella term which uh, puts all the three above together. Okay, uh, so this is the kind of reality in which we live. So communication is bound to undergo variations. So it has its own variables uh, depending upon AR, VR, MR, and XR. Communication varies as the form of communication changes. Communication and communicational components undergo variety as such. Next slide, please. In the next slide, we see uh, the gee, gee. pedagogical tools, especially it's, a, it's for teachers and uh, students. Uh, that these are the pedagogical uh, tools we uh, use. Yes. That is the slide. So we use computers, laptops, Kindle, smartphones, smart boards, Kahoot and uh, different kinds of apps for teaching and learning. Nowadays, online classes, uh, e-language motivators uh, should be added to this list. Uh, so you see that such platforms are there for teaching and learning, for communication overall, for communication in general, and for pedagogical practices in particular. We have these different kinds of gadgets. Next slide, you see, in the next slide, we have uh, some upcoming areas and trends in the next slide. We have different kinds of you know, upcoming areas like digital humanities, text technology, the links are given so you can um, explore them and find out more about those uh, fields. Then design thinking is there. The moment we click on the screen of a mobile, or a laptop, see, uh, our choices are revealed. And the world of commerce is always ready to grab the customers, to catch hold the customers. So uh, click uh, here and the choices are over there. And very soon we see that uh, using the technique of design thinking, using this medium, uh, that companies nowadays are finding out uh, what are the choices of their customers and users, not only customers, the users who use uh, internet and all. Then IoT is their internet of things. Uh, so uh, internet now is not uh, limited to computers and mobile phones and all that. Uh, in future, in near future, maybe that our refrigerator uh, will be connected, uh, our washing machine may be connected. Uh, and uh, these are the things. So IoT, internet of things. Digital marketing is an upcoming area. Why do I share these upcoming areas? Because as the area changes,
communication undergoes some change. And uh, you see that uh, this counts a lot to understand the, what, what is the nature of communication in different fields. So digital marketing is that communication in multimedia is that uh, on social media, social networking sites, communication operates differently. Uh, emails, uh, it operates differently. WhatsApp, it operates a little differently. In animation films, it operates uh, very differently. In advertisements, very creative and innovative use of language is done. So communication uh, differs from medium to medium and uh, you see objective to objective. Every medium has its own objective. In the next slide, see, further part of review in short. Next slide, please. Uh, in the next slide, see the review of communication studies. Brief. These are the existing uh, uh, theories of communication. So message production has its own theories message uh, processing has its own theories and accordingly there are different areas and the theories associated with those areas are mentioned over there. Uh, uh, dear friends, it's not the objective of this present deliberation to talk on all these theories and it's not possible also we have time constraints also. So this is a brief review just to give mention to all these theories and models uh, already that are uh, see uh, existing. So uh, we can explore more uh, uh, here after, after the presentation also, we can take search and find out more information about these theories and models. I take you to next slide, please. Next slide is about the review of communication studies again in brief. It's about the existing models of communication. You see that Shannon Weir model is there, Burlow model is there. And so accordingly, there are a number of uh, models of communication. Now you can understand that when all these models are already existing, why a model for communication in films? See, one size fits all is a kind of superstition, I believe. One size fits all is a superstition. We require different strokes for different folks. As these sayings go, as the form of communication changes, Shannon and Weaver model talks about something different, something else. Burlow model is, de is derived for something else. The objectives of these models are different. These models are not evolved only to study communication in films. Hence, there is need of any models. And I don't say that there are no models on communication in films. They are there. Uh, uh, we can find them out also. They are definitely there. Uh, but you see again that nowadays, the films are also undergoing change. TikTok is the latest kind of addition. And in future, some new forms of films will come as the form of film changes, the form of communication changes, and accordingly the components of communication, communication undergo some changes. So considering this in mind, all these models with due respect to all these models and on the basis of such very good models de derived by very good reputed uh, scholarly uh, eminent personalities, uh, linguists and all of them, uh, they, they offer us the groundwork uh, to explore something more. So I take you to the next slide. It's now the overview of communication in films and thereafter the model, Versurance uh, model is there. Yes, the same slide. This is a model I would like to talk uh, about. I've chosen this deliberately. Uh, this is from the area of pragmatics. Uh, Jeff Warshon uh, is a linguist, is a pragmatician. Uh, in his understanding pragmatics, uh, he has uh, presented this model. It is model of you know contextual coordinates of adaptability. Uh, in short, we'll try to understand this model and then we'll go ahead. You see, this model again has got uh, two focal points. You, you can see a W shape. Uh, figure, but this is not a W. These are two V's intersecting each other. These are two V's, two V shapes, which are intersecting in this way, okay, to each other. Now, you can see that at the bottom of these two V's, uh, at the end of first V shape, there is U, and at the end of second, 
uh, you see there is I. U is utterer, speaker. I is interpreter, the recipient. So in simple words, sender of communication and recipient of communication. So this model gives us information about uh, the linguistic choices of both the speakers. And you see, uh, the dotted lines separate these two V's in three different parts. The uppermost part is the physical world in which we live, the social world in which we live, and our own psychological, mental world. So these are the three worlds uh, in which we live, and we make the concept of this model is that, according to Virtual, both the speakers and say recipients make their linguistic choices, choices of communication. Whatever words we use are collected from either our physical world or social world or mental world or uh, intermixed uh, in all these three worlds. Some choices are intermixed, interrelated to all three different worlds. So, we make our choices. Now, uh, if this is so, then why these two V's are there? Because everybody has his own different choices. Now, there is an intersecting area also. So this central V that you can see, I hope you can uh, see my fingers also. So this central V I call your attention to. In this central V, there are common choices. Now I share with you an example. Uh, an American lady asks an Indian lady, looking at the ornaments that she had put on, okay, around her neck. An American lady asks an Indian lady, what is this? And the Indian lady, quite pridefully, touches it and says, this is Mangal Sutra. This is Mangal Sutra, you see. Now, the question of American lady was, what is this? It was clearly understood by Indian lady because every word is very simple and she knows all those words. But whatever Indian lady says, this is a Mangal Sutra. This is a, these words are no problem. But Mangal Sutra has got a problem. She has to explain it further that it's a holy necklace and it has got religious context, cultural context and all that. She will have to clarify this. So. Uh, as she has to clarify the word Mangal Sutra, you can understand that that the word Mangal Sutra does not belong to the physical or social or mental world of American lady. So the context in which she lives, the context in which she communicates, the word Mangal Sutra is not the part of her context, but it is definitely the part and parcel of Indian lady's context. So, this does not belong to the shared part of the context. It falls outside the shared part of the context. So, she requires more explanation. Dear friends, it's my attempt to explain this model so that you can understand that how minutely linguists uh, come out with their models. Hats off to Varshuram for this model, uh, the model that uh, tells us, that explains what way uh, users make their linguistic choices, both while uttering something, while speaking something, and while interpreting something also. So this is model of Varshuran for your information. I take you to the next slide. You see, as this model of Varshuran is useful for day-to-day -day communication, in films also there is the need of uh, different kinds of models. Uh, that can bring out communication in different kinds of movies. You see, in the next slide, you can see why a model of communication in uh, films. You see, there are different forms and components of communication. For instance, you can see uh, there are print forms, non-print forms, uh, broadcasting media is there. So as the medium changes, print media, non-print media, the uh, broadcasting comes under that. Some, you see, Every media has its own different components of communication. So we have to give it a thought that uh, a film as a different kind of media, uh, as a different kind of medium has its own components. So we have to 
uh, give justice to all those components that are associated with movies. You see, poetry has got emotive, figurative kind of language, not necessarily all the times, but uh, uh, mostly you see in mainstream poetry, we see that poetry deals with emotive language, figurative language in short to comment. Uh, drama has got conversational use of language, dialogic form of language is there. So though the same language is there, the treatment given to language, the techniques used in language are different. So here itself, communication in poetry and communication uh, done through drama, they differ from each other. Though they are literary forms, though they are print forms, still as the uh, form of literature changes, the form of communication changes and the components also are different. Fiction has got narrative kind of language, you know all. News items have to deal with factual uh, kind of data, uh, the current affairs and all that. And advertisements, creative, innovative, precision of language. These are some of the features of communication uh, done through advertisements. I take you to the next slide, please. Uh, in the following slide, you can see uh, that uh, again, why the model of communication in films, uh, textual components are there in print medium. If we consider the printed text, we have textual components, four textual components like punctuation marks, grammatical level, uh, graphical usage and all that. And the contextual components are also there. Uh, personal references are there. We sometimes uh, have to go outside the text uh, and understand uh, sometimes uh, you see, while reading the story, uh, we relate it to our own experiences, personal experiences. So in terms of time, in terms of space, and in terms of personal experiences, we see that contextual components uh, operate, uh, and thus contextually, we try to understand the communication in the print form. I take you to the next slide. If you have any questions at the end, definitely you can ask me your questions. You may have in uh, during the presentation, you may have certain doubts. So uh, you can definitely ask your doubts. I would appreciate and I would try my best to answer uh, your doubts. You see uh, that in the next slide, uh, non-print forms are considered, audio form, radio channels are there. See, it's a sound centered channel. Uh, nothing is seen, nothing is visible. It's all audio. So everything is communicated through sounds, verbal or non-verbal, with music, uh, with uh, voice modulation, and lots of things. That communication is done through uh, radio channels. Audiovisual forms, we have uh, films and TV shows and YouTube channels and whatnot. You see, so audiovisual forms have their own components of communication. Uh, uh, I would like to take you a, a little back to uh, the print medium and see the, what way uh, the contextual level operates. You see that a comma is there, for example. A comma uh, in print form uh, is used as a sign to indicate that the reader is supposed to pause a little, a full stop to pause a little longer, a question mark to indicate that it's a question an exclamatory mark to indicate that it's an exclamation. You can understand the rest of the things. So these signs, these punctuation marks are the indicators. This is cotextual level of language. These are the indicators uh, for the readers, what way he is supposed to read. Uh, but when it, the same text is transformed into say audiovisual text, the same printed text, when it comes from page to stage and from stage to screen, when it comes from page to screen, when it comes to screen, what happens with the pause? What happens with the exclamatory mark? And what happens to, with the, the question mark? Do we say, what's your name, please? Question mark. What a beautiful idea, exclamatory mark. Do we say like this? No, that would be absurd, certainly. So instead of that, we use voice modulation. So a comma is uh, used in speaking as a pause. So a pause replaces a comma, a longer pause replaces a full stop, and a different kind of voice modulation replaces a question mark, and a different kind of 
a suitable kind of, I mean, uh, voice modulation, replaces and exclamatory mark. So the whole set of punctuation marks underpose transformation. Isn't it interesting? I'm sure you'll agree very easily. And so in the audiovisual forms, in films, what happens with the commas and uh, full stops and question marks is really an interesting thing to study. And hence, there is a need of model of communication in films. Uh, so I take you now to the different, the next slide to understand more about this. So with uh, the operational, with not earlier slide perhaps, Dr. Prashant, it is slide number 14. Slide number 14, please. Non-print forms, you see, the operational level is altogether different in non-print forms. So we make use of body language and voice modulation and space distancing and camera work. Earlier three, earlier three, uh, we know very well. Even we know the later ones, the remaining ones, but perhaps in our day-to-day -day teaching and learning, I'm basically talking about the teachers and students. In our day-to-day -day teaching and learning, we do not consider uh, much of the camera works and lights and sounds and makeup and uh, locations of shootings and all those things related to films especially. So film has become part of uh, curriculum. Now, it's not a new thing now. So we need to consider these aspects of communication also along with the earlier ones. So body language, voice modulation, space distancing are all non-verbal aspects of communication. The remaining ones are also the non-verbal aspects of communication, specifically related to movies. So we have to give a thought to all these different, you see, uh, components of communication. I take you to the next uh, slide. You see, um, how do we understand that there is entry of a king on the stage or on the screen? The crown of the king, the costumes of the king are sufficient to reveal the identity of that character that a king is coming. Before the king speaks anything, means before he verbally communicates anything, non-verbally, much of the things are communicated. So using technology, using the different components of uh, communication in films, communication takes place. Remember, everything communicates in a movie. Even the movie, even before the movie is released, the communication begins. Even before the movie begins, communication begins through the audio track or say any uh, scenes, the, the first projection itself and all that. Or even before that, trailers are there and promos are there. And we start learning about that film. This is all part and parcel of any model in the making that the communication begins even before the movie begins. Even before the movie is released, communication uh, is released and it, 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 uh, it goes on. So this is something very interesting. So uh, the new model can accommodate, uh, is supposed to accommodate uh, all these things. I'm not sure whether uh, it can be a success or not, but we can definitely try for that. You see, uh, now I take uh, you to uh, where does communication lie? Now, uh, or the meaning lie? In the next slide, you see, in the next slide, identify the text in the following slides. Now I take you back to print form a little uh, for some interesting kinds of, you know, examples. The next slide, please. Our dear participants, try to identify what is this? Earlier slide, please. Earlier, yes. What is this? I'm sure most of you have guessed it. And if I can hear any feedback, uh, I would love to. It's a poem from Ashok Kadam, sir. Thank you. From uh, Shamba Chakravarti, ma'am. Uh, the answers have come from Nikhil Kalyani. Uh, the answer has come. Thank you very much, all the participants, for these answers. It's very simple. It's as simple as that. Uh, so my point is that not a single word is written. No text is there. And yet you can understand that it's a poem. It's the very layout 
that reveals the identity of the text. And this is something interesting to understand that communication has got a variety of components. We have been studying the components of communication, no doubt about that. But we also need to accommodate uh, the layout of any text. Now, when it comes to Derrida, uh, uh, that will be dragging to a very vast area. Uh, I don't want to go to that. Uh, but you see, uh, uh, in the in the uh, given time, it won't be talk, uh, It won't be possible to talk about more about the uh, religion of like Derrida and the theory of reconstruction. But still, according to Derrida, uh, nothing is outside the text. The whole world is text, and text is gas. So he understands that the nature of text is not merely words. In short, to understand, I, I know that I won't be able to give justice to uh, the legendary figure like Derrida in such a short time. But I uh, wanted just to give a reference. So communication is not in the words only. We know all that, but we also should pay attention to this thing that communication is there in the layout of the text also. I take you to the next slide, please. It's a poem. The answer is it's a poem. And now I take you to the next slide. Now, sure, very good. Again, Shampa Chakravarti Man. It's a formal later. Ashok Kadam, sir, it's a later. Neelam Patil and Nidhul Kandani. Uh, so, all of you, thank you uh, very much for your quick responses. This is a later. This is format of later. No word is written. There is no need from Galaxy A50. Uh, to all panelists uh, later uh, is the response. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, see, so it's a format of a later. Dr. Renu Dalila, thanks for uh, your uh, response. The slides are not clear to her, uh, but you see that uh, there is nothing to read in this slide. There are just dotted lines and just a format of a later is given. So the previous two slides, the earlier one was a poem, format of a poem. This one is the layout for later. I take you to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. So thank you all. So uh, communication begins even before the text appears on the paper. Communication be begins even before the words appear on the screen of movie. Communication begins. So everything is communicated. Nothing is superfluous, as Aristotle says. Using this principle, uh, the writer and the screenplay writer and the director and technicians and the whole uh, crew, the whole team of performers, they uh, make use of every bit of thing in the film for the sake of communication. There are multiple roles uh, given to each and every component uh, used uh, there in movies. Now I take you to uh, some more examples. What do you remember? Identify the form of literature on the basis of this, these sentences given. I go. And what is this? You can understand. Uh, it's a story. So again, uh, very many responses are uh, flocking in. Uh, Hemkant and the earlier participants are also there. Seven S um, and all the participants, Archana Deshmukh, uh, Shahaji Karandesa. Uh, thanks to all of you uh, from Mogi Sam. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody for your responses. The second one, once upon a time, you see, long, long ago, once upon a time, these are the opening lines normally of the short stories. So we can anticipate what is to come next. So communication is anticipated. So uh, the, the stock expressions, the stock phrases, sometimes that are used in this way, long, long ago is used as the opening expression once upon a time, as an opening expression, uh, you see uh, in case of short stories. So uh, the next one, you see, the third one is for drama. Uh, Swati Sarunke, ma'am, uh, that's uh, quite correct. Uh, thank you very much. Seven is Hemant uh, Dadi, sir. Thank you very much. The third expression is for drama. Ajit uh, Jatsak, sir, thank you so much for your responses. I uh, take you to the next slide now. So you see that every form of literature has got a specific kind of component of communication. Now, again, a very playful kind of exercise. This is a jumbled story. The story is on the uh, screen. 
and you are supposed to put the sentences in the right order. Dear participants, I would suggest you to uh, arrange just the sequence in numbers. You don't have that much time to write down all these sentences and to arrange the sequence. Just think of the numbers. For example, I open uh, that sentence number nine uh, is, you see, found to be the first sentence. Sentence number nine is the first, found to be the first sentence. Uh, Dr. Prashant says there is a bit of a problem in reading uh, the screen. I don't know how to fix it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because uh, as you are speaking from mobile and okay. I'm sharing it from laptop. So okay. there okay. is a blurry. Of, there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, anyways, anyways. Uh, if you can read it, fine. Even if you can't read it, it's very simple uh, to uh, understand that. Uh, you see that we just have to arrange all the sentences in a proper sequence so that we form a story. That's very good. Now uh, the view is expanded since enlarged. Uh, so I hope now it is visible to you. It is legible. You see, uh, sentence number nine obviously is bound to the first sentence. And accordingly, you can arrange the sentences in order in the right sequence so that we can get a meaningful story. The, the objective uh, behind this slide is to uh, discuss the point that communication, uh, the meaningful communication, I say, the meaningful communication depends very much on the logical sequencing of the text. The way the sentences are ordered, the way the utterances are ordered, the way the lines in the poetry are ordered, the way the scenes in a movie are ordered, logical sequencing is highly essential for a meaningful piece of communication. The meaning lies there in the logical communication. Thank you, that's all. We uh, go ahead for the next slide in which you can see the right sequence is given. Sentence number nine, four, five, seven, three, one, 10, two, eight, and six. Later on, I would request Dr. Prashant sir to share this PPT with all the participants. Surely, sir, okay. surely. Uh, so that uh, they can read later on if they want uh, and they can enjoy uh, the exercises, they can share with the students, um, uh, whatever. So, thank you very much. So, this is the right sequence, and in this logical sequence, if we uh, put the, the sentences, we definitely can get a meaningful story over there. So, now to the next slide, I take where the story in the right order, in the logical order is given. Now, uh, without wasting any more time, we go to the next slide, please. In the next slide, you can see that uh, communication lies there in punctuation, pauses, state directions in case of drama. Then signs, color signs, pictures, graphics, emoticons, and whatnot. All these things are used. They're in different medium, uh, media, and a film has its own components. Now I take you to some inter some more interesting exercises. Very briefly, we'll go for that, and then we we'll go ahead. Next slide, please. You take a look at the next slide, please. Communication is there also. In but the can I stop sh sharing and then one second play it? Uh, uh, please, if you want. Uh, uh, clarity uh, should be there. We'll take care of it. So, dear friends, when it comes to film as a medium, it has got its own medium specific components. Like uh, light effects are there, music is there, costumes are there, screen is the area of projection. Uh, camera is the device through which we look at the reality. The reality is contrived. So obviously communication is also contrived in a sense that it is pre-designed, pre-composed kind of communication. I take you back to the slide. I hope now it is clearer. Uh, and uh, if there is no problem, then uh, let's take a look at this slide. Communication lies there. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Ashok Kadamsa. Uh, thank you very much. 
uh, communication is there also in the punctuation. See, let's eat grandma and the graphic can, uh, thank you, Kalani uh, ma'am, thank you. Uh, let's eat grandma and the graphic is clear enough to give you the message. What meaning is communicated? If there is no comma, uh, the grandma becomes our supper and uh, that becomes our dinner, you see. So in the following slide, let's eat comma grandma. This comma is an important thing to understand. It matters a lot. Otherwise, the meaning is altered, meaning is seriously damaged, meaning is distorted. So uh, different things happen with meaning, but whatever meaning that the speaker wants to communicate doesn't reach the recipient. That is for sure. So, dear friends, I'm very happy that now the slideshow is very clear to all the participants. Uh, dear friends, uh, you see that in the following slide also, we can see uh, in the following slide, if I can take you to the next slide, we are, next slide please, we are going to learn to cut and paste kids. Commas matter, you see. Commas definitely matter. We are going to uh, learn to cut and paste kids. Uh, so it's ridiculous, you can uh, understand it. So it definitely requires certain commas at the right place, uh, right punctuation marks should be there to communicate the right piece of meaning. In the following slide, next slide please. Uh, Prashant sir, next slide. Communication is there also in punctuation marks. The more examples of punctuation marks are uh, given. So you can enjoy a lot many examples of this kind. Uh, in the following slide also, if I can take you to the next slide, please. So there are some more examples of why punctuation matters. Some people find inspiration in cooking their families and their dogs. Okay, uh, and others find inspiration in cooking, their families and their dogs. So you can understand what the comma separates the different uh, units of speech. And obviously the meaningful communication is there in the second sentence due to the rightly placed commas. I take you to the next slide now. The next slide, please. Well, again, a legendary figure, Mark Twain says, the right word may be effective, but no word was ever as effective as a, a rightly timed pause. So a pause is highly effective at times. At times, a pause holds the very nucleus of communication, nucleus of meaning. The very center of meaning uh, lies there in a pause. So words, are on the one hand and a pause is there on the other hand. See, the density of meaning is much there, is very much there in some pauses. So if we rightly place the pauses, we rightly place the meaning, we rightly communicate the meaning. Thanks to Mark Twain, thanks to all the participants. Uh, now I take you to the next slide, please. Communication is uh, there in the following components, body language, and uh, say intonation, voice modulation, space, time, and lots of other elements that we have already seen earlier. Now, I take you to uh, some examples of camera angles in films. So to the next slide, please. I take you to the next slide, please. Okay, uh, see, these are the different camera angles and I would like to discuss them one by one so that we can get an idea of the different camera angles and the meaning, the communication related to these different angles, you see. Uh, this an overview is there sometimes, an eye level shot is there. Now, you can see that this is an eye level shot. See, now it is straight. It is in the line of my eyes. So it's an eye level uh, shot. Uh, in the following slide, you can see the examples, the snaps taken there, which uh, clarify what are the different angles. Next slide, please. 
So this is the first uh, camera angle that we study. Uh, this is an eye level shot, you can understand. The camera and the eyes are at the same height. Okay, so this is an eye level shot. And we see that many times uh, we have such scenes in movies. And you can understand the objective of such uh, camera angles. Eye angle shot, uh, such shots are actually much less standard than one might, uh, be initial, might initially think. Because directors often prefer to place the camera at shoulder level to attain a much more cinematic look. So the second, uh, we have the next, uh, the, there is another camera angle that is shoulder uh, level. No, this one is not the shoulder level. Uh, go to the previous slide, please. So a shoulder level angle is preferred to an eye level angle. Uh, so the next slide, you can see in the next slide, we see a different angle. It is low angle shot from uh, the bottom, from the uh, say set of ground, from the ground, uh, the camera is projected and we see such a kind of low angle shot. Uh, this is done. Uh, the objective is to project, uh, you see, the importance of any character, the importance of the personality, uh, the impressive entry of a hero or even a villain. So to impress uh, the audience, uh, to bring out uh, the importance of that character in the movie, such a kind of a dominating end of angle. Uh, the dominating uh, personality dominance uh, comes out through this camera angle. Then the next angle is there. The next angle is a high angle shot from the top. The camera uh, operates and it catches the view in which the characters are trivial. They are unimportant. If the previous one brings out the importance of the characters, the later one brings out uh, the, uh, the trivial, uh, how insignificant are these characters and all that. The next angle is a knee level shot. The following angle, the next slide, is a knee level shot. And uh, this is done when the camera height is about as low as your uh, knees, as the knees of the characters. And we can emphasize the character's superiority if paired with a low angle. Complementary to low angle, in combination with low angle, if we use this angle, uh, then see, we can emphasize the superiority of any character. At times we see the characters walking, just their feet are shown, just their shoes are seen, uh, and the tick-tock uh, sound of their uh, shoes, their, their foot, uh, footsteps is heard. So in uh, again, you can understand that music is complementary to camera work. And the view that you see is complementary to uh, all uh, that camera uh, work uh, and all that you see. The next uh, slide, please. In the next slide, we see a ground level shot is there. Ground level shot is that uh, you can see when your camera is on the ground and it is used to feature a character's walking without revealing their face. Sometimes to create suspense, as an element in the story, in the play, in the film, to create suspense, you see, in the movie, um, this camera angle uh, is highly useful. Uh, it remains hidden, uh, the face remains hidden, so we become curious to understand who's walking and uh, what the person is walking for and all that. Uh, so this is also an interesting piece of information. I'm sure you can understand it. In the next slide, you see again a different uh, angle. It's a shoulder level shot um, that is preferred to the eye level shot, as I earlier uh, had stated. Now, at present, I'm also using um, I'm using a mobile phone uh, for uh, my presentation, and my mobile phone is fixed at the same angle that is shoulder level, uh, so that I find it more convenient to look at the slides and to make my presentation. So this is convenient for presentations also. In movies, definitely it has got different objectives. The objective is even clearly uh, in the slideshow. 
uh, you can uh, read that, uh, how it is preferable to eye level shot and all that. In the next slide, a Dutch angle or a Dutch tilt shot is there. Tilt shot is tilt left or tilt right <laughs> or tilt down. So tilt up, tilt down, tilt left, tilt right. In these four ways, uh, this can operate and it has its own objectives. Uh, you see that sometimes the camera work, uh, uh, there is a lot of importance nowadays to given to uh, camera work. Sometimes uh, we even fail to understand why so much of camera work is there. In especially songs you see, hardly for a fraction second, uh, the camera is, uh, the camera projects one uh, picture and the next moment itself, uh, it shows us something else. And uh, we see a montage, uh, colas uh, almost, and we are sometimes unable to even pursue the images. It has become so fast for what different purposes, I myself do not know much, uh, but still the camera work has become very important nowadays. Uh, this tilted camera um, uh, shows some, sometimes the dilemmatic condition uh, of any character if it fluctuates from left to right, left to right, anything like this, uh, then it shows a dilemmatic condition. Then the next slide is, uh, you see an aerial shot. Now that everywhere drones are uh, seen uh, over the uh, tops of our, uh, say, houses and all that, See, so these drone cameras are working and they take the aerial shots uh, only. Here you can uh, take a look at this scene, uh, what way a camera angle can take an aerial shot. And um, it is very interesting, very impressive. In movies, very often uh, it is used. And in, uh, very quickly, uh, it can give you an overview of a large area. Uh, and in the shortest possible time, we can get the idea of the location, the place, and all those things. Thank you very much. Next slide. This is now about the lighting techniques. You see, there are so many things uh, about the components of uh, communication in movies. Uh, just two of them are picked up here for the present deliberation, uh, camera angles and the lighting techniques. Uh, I take you to the next slide, please. In the next slide, you can see that the light effects, that neutral lighting is there. So uh, in neutral lighting, you can take a look at the slide and you can understand it, I'm sure. Uh, what way neutral lighting is used in movies and uh, what is it used for? The details are given on the screen. I need not uh, read those details. Later on also, uh, you can uh, read all those details and understand what way that the uh, natural lighting, uh, outdoor shootings and uh, all that, uh, over there natural lighting is used and the scene looks like this. Realistic views are projected there and the remaining things are there on your screen. I take you to the next slide, please. The next slide, you can see uh, that it is a uh, uh, key lighting, the second one. A key light is primary light source, as it is mentioned over there. You can see uh, what way the light effect works there and what way the image, what way the scene is taken, uh, what view of the character is projected over there. Uh, everywhere darkness is there and there's light on the face of that uh, character. The details uh, for more details, you can read the details on the screen. Okay. In the next slide, you can see a high key lighting is there. Uh, so highlight brightness is more, um, light effect is used very differently. Brightness is uh, more as compared to earlier uh, slide you can uh, understand. So uh, this high key lighting is that the objectives, uh, the information is there and the effect is also seen in the uh, say insight, 
that is over there. Okay, so the insert can clarify the example and for the data, uh, you can read the matter over there. In the following slide, we have a low key lighting again. Okay, uh, see, uh, there is there are more examples in darkness. See, in uh, Hollywood movies, most of the times, for example, Harry Potter movies, see, many times there is darkness. Uh, and in Indian cinema, uh, this is perhaps a very general, uh, to, be, to speak very broadly, uh, it's a very general kind of observation that Indian cinema has uh, much of brightness, whereas uh, uh, Hollywood movies, uh, it's, uh, there, there can be some uh, different examples, but a general observation, broadly speaking, I say, uh, that it, it may be super, uh, sweeping generalization, maybe, uh, but uh, in the movies like Harry Potter, we see that darkness is there. And the light effect that is used is low-key lighting that is preferred over there. Uh, in, in mysterious kinds of themes, mystery, uh, and say miraculous kinds of you know, scenes and all that. So depending upon the requirement of the film, requirement of the, the scenes, the light effects are used. In the next slide, you can see that uh, fill lighting is uh, used over there. Uh, what is fill light? The explanation is given. The slide is self-explanatory from different angles. You see different light effects are used. See at the uh, temple side, you see on the chin side, uh, on the cheek side, there are different light effects used. Somewhere there is darkness, a deliberate uh, darkness and deliberate brightness. They are uh, used for different objectives. Okay, the objectives and details are there on the screen. So I avoid writing so that we can save our time use. I take you to the next slide, please. In the next slide, you see, a uh, three point uh, lighting setup is that uh, light effects from three different, uh, say, uh, sets, setups are uh, over there. The details are given on the screen. You can see I couldn't uh, get a picture uh, as an example uh, over there, uh, but you can see the data is there, the description is there. Three point lighting effect. The next slide, uh, we have backlighting. As the name goes, uh, lights are there from the backside. Now, sometimes you see on the screen, we just see a silhouette, a dark shadow just the outline of any person. Uh, again, in mysteries, um, in uh, horror movies sometimes, in mysterious kinds of scenes, in suspense movies, we see such kinds of scenes where the light is projected from the backside of that person. Now here the front side is also bright, but in some cases, uh, front side is very dark. Just the outline of that person is seen, a silhouette. It's called a silhouette, you know. Uh, that just a silhouette, just the outline of that person is projected. And in horror movies, mostly such scenes are taken as such light effects are used for that. I take you to the next slide, please. The practical light. Okay. Uh, again, see a party scene is there. And in the party scenes like this, uh, we see all brightness, celebrations, uh, and all that. So in the darkness also, there is, uh, you see, glittering lights are there at the back side. And in the front, there is uh, a source of light that shows the face of the character sitting in the front. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, you know, some practical light. Uh, the details are given on uh, the screen, you can see. The next one is hard lighting. Okay, there's a lot of light uh, that is used over the uh, hard lighting is there, too bright kind of light is used. I could not uh, produce uh, a, a picture, a supporting picture for this, but the details again are on the slide. Is a harsh soaring of light. You see that can be created with a direct beam from a light source from the sunlight. So uh, it makes you blink. It, it makes you blink your eyelids is so bright, the spurt of light you can see. So that is hardly 
next uh, you can see the example is soft light see soft light is the the softness can be felt uh, the warmth of the scene uh, can be felt uh, very easily so the light effects are used to contribute to the meaning making process so communication as a process uh, meaning of communication and meaning making as a process of uh, you see light effects have their own uh, say and their own play in the process of communication so as a component it contributes to uh, that process of communication so soft light uh, has its own say and play in the process of communication i take you to the next slide uh, bounce lighting is there you can see the reflecting kinds of uh, lights bounce lighting is there a whiteboard is there a white card uh, is there and you see reflection is used for light effects more details are on the slide in the next slide you can see that side lighting or uh, you can understand uh, that it is a, a sure slope lighting uh, and in this slide uh, we see a person sitting over there and uh, there is a, a special light effect used over there chiaroscuro uh, lighting side lighting refers to light that enters the frame from the side to highlight a person or object you see so this is a different kind of light effect side from one side from a lateral view the light is projected even in theater you see from the wings some rim lights are used from the top sometimes some lights are used okay from the side of you say the foot foot lights are used uh, sometimes from the top side light effects are used from um, the lateral side you see um, some rim lights or cut lights are used dinkies are used focos are used in theater also there are lot many types of light effects but now we are discussing at present the light effects in movies the next is motivated lighting next slide motivated lighting motivated lighting comes into play you see it's in the imitation of natural light is just to focus you see um, and that the light flocks in from the source which is not natural source but it looks like natural source the next one you can see that it is ambient light again i could uh, collect a picture uh, suitable but you take a few seconds to read this information black night or an artificial space this ambient light is used and uh, this light effect is used uh, now uh, to the next uh, slide i wanted actually to play a movie but i am not sure how much time we have dr prashant sir we are running out of time okay so uh, uh, let's skip this and uh, let's go to the next slide please see this is a model of communication in drama in theater communication uh, operates in this way uh, according to this model uh, i had derived this model uh, while doing my phd uh, so i uh, would love to produce this model uh, and in addition to the three channels of communication that you can see that the message is transmitted through narrative stage instructions are there the character comes goes sits down makes movements uh, the technicians operate light uh, music and all that so this information that is there inside the bracket in the script you see uh, that information is called stage direction so the left side narrative uh, 
uh, is about the stage directions. The central channel is or the main communication that is verbal communication. We cannot call it main, but uh, I would just say it is verbal communication because at times non-verbal communication becomes more important. Uh, so conversational language and utterances means dialogues are used and the right side is contextual level or grammatical level when we think of script of drama script of drama we have to consider the contextual we have earlier uh, discussed the importance of pauses and punctuation marks and all that and grammatical level what way a question contributes differently what way an exclamation contributes differently and all that you see so this is a model of communication in drama next to that next slide please now in addition to this model what more components need to find place in a model of communication in films that is in the making you see uh, besides the uh, contextual and the grammatical level the following component it should be besides uh, i'm sorry it has it is uh, a typographical error besides the textual and grammatical level you see uh, these components also should uh, find place in the new uh, model that is the model in the making that is body language um, intonation voice modulation space time camera work lights and all those you can see and view read and there can be some more elements also there are lots of other components i just couldn't uh, give justice to all those components uh, we require more thinking uh, we require uh, better thinking uh, fairer thinking so i'll try and uh, give it a thought with your comments suggestions uh, uh, and guidance even um, i i need that i appreciate i would appreciate uh, if i can get guidance from the learned audience who are attending this uh, web lecture series uh, here i uh, conclude my session thank you very much i thank dr prashant Uh, so there are few questions in yes, the yes, Q and A. Yes, yes, please, please, please. You uh, can. I, yes, yes. I'll I'll try to answer. Yes, yes. Questions. Please. There is a question by Sangeeta Gorke, ma'am. Can you oh, throw some light on cinema cinematography, please? Cinematography. Yes. Ah, uh, well, uh, cinematography. You see, again, it takes us to film theories, and uh, as I. Uh, uh, in the first comment on the first slide only i mentioned it that uh, theorizing uh, is uh, kept a little aside uh, for the convenience of my presentation practicalizing was uh, my objective so i didn't think much of cinematography as such but definitely it's a model in the making so obviously ma'am i thank you very much uh, you have pointed out a, a very good thing uh it is definitely a significant uh, point to think over i'll definitely give it a thought thank you more questions hello sir you can hello. read few questions from q and a okay okay uh i do not see q and a here on the screen prashant there are only one or two if anyone has a questions kindly put it in a chat box there Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, sir, you can see there are few questions in chat box as well. Ah, uh, Prashant, uh, uh, I'm. 
I think my video is by mistake turned off. It's okay, not an issue, sir. Just uh, start your, your video. Um, even I do not see that on the screen. Okay, okay. Do you read? Please, please read the question for me. Uh, but uh, the, uh, some of the questions are not related to our topic. But anyway, could you share the key mechanism to teach punctuations as they are important part of the sentence? Hello? As I said earlier, that practicalizing the deliberation uh, keeps our presentation simple and interesting. So in the classrooms also, with different examples, and not many examples are available on net and everywhere. So with such examples, we definitely can teach punctuation marks. Of course, theoretical information is necessary, uh, and that that also should be discussed in the classes. Okay. Uh, there is one more. Uh, can you throw light upon communication and gendering in film studies? Uh, communication and gendering in film studies. Uh, well, uh, mm -hmm. communication. Sometimes you see uh, this is an important area, no doubt about that. Uh, and uh, you see that character specific communication, place influencing communication, in the same way, gender influencing communication matters a lot. So two women talking to each other, talk differently, a man and a woman, while talking to each other, they uh, talk differently. So uh, when it comes to gender specifically, uh, there are gender specific variations, no doubt. There are some of the, uh, you, may be, uh, you may call them taboo and all that. So that uh, influences communication as long as uh, gender specific, uh, variables are concerned. Uh, there are some, um, there may be some um, comments that women would like to avoid uh, talking in front of uh, men and uh, vice versa. But this is not limited. Gender specific communication is not limited to this only, but this can be one of the examples that we can at present discuss. Uh, but certainly uh, not only gender specific, I would add to that that it is age specific. Uh, the way a child speaks uh, uh, a grown-up, uh, uh, an elderly person, mm -hmm. a senior citizen, uh, a grandpa is not supposed to speak in the same way. So as the age differs, the communication differs, as the gender is different, gender specific variations are certainly, certainly there. So we need to think over them, uh, depending upon the scene in the movie, the theme of the movie, the characters in the movie, and all that. Thank you. Any other questions, please? Sir, how expressions such as Mokembo Kushwa type become popular though they were not the shared knowledge of audience? Mm, yes. Uh, very good question. I, I love this question. This question is asked by Hanumant Autari, sir. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, Dr. Autari, sir, uh, it's a very interesting question and I'm very happy to answer this in brief. Uh, Mogambo Khushwa, I too, though not Mogambo, I'm also very happy, uh, as uh, just like Mogambo. Okay, uh, Mogambo Khushwa uh, becomes, you see, uh, almost a tagline of this character. In the course of the movie, it's not that when he first utters, uh, the message that is communicated is different. But when uh, in the course of the movie, as he keeps repeating this same dialogue, uh, it gets different connotations. We know all what are denotations and connotations, implied meanings, contextual meanings. And when the Mugambo Kushwa, his villainy comes out, that being Kush, being happy, is being very cruel. So this very different meaning what is said and what is meant are two poles apart. Very different thing is meant by saying something that is very different. By saying that he is happy, he is kush, 
we can understand that he is very cruel and he has got very terrible plans now that we are going to see something terrible now something terrible is impending so this is established this new meaning this added meaning from happiness to cruelty is the graph of the meaning that we see rising or progressing not rising it may be uh, falling also you may call but the uh, graph progressing the trend progressing trend of meaning that progresses from happiness no matter how push you are to rogambo is very clear is a bad is the worst villain okay i hate him so uh, this progress of meaning from happiness to cruelty takes place in the course of the time in the length of the movie during um, the time period when we watch the movie so over the scenes that we watch after some scenes that we watch the new meaning is added and it is contributed in this way so meaning okay, sir. has got a process and thus in the process of communication the new meanings are added thank you very much i would have talked at length on this but we have time constraints thank you yes yes uh, we will take a last question can we assume film as a grammatical statement film as a grammatical statement uh, this question is asked by ravindra vaidya sir uh, film as a grammatical statement uh, fine uh, we may give it a thought i will have to think over this question and i am very happy this question is asked by my student my beloved student dr uh, ravindra vaidya uh, thank you very much for a very good question as a grammatical statement definitely uh, because uh, grammar definitely operate uh, in the text the text is in a different form uh, over here it's text on the screen so definitely a different line of grammar uh, grammar on the screen um, uh, may be explored uh, we it opens up perhaps a different area for exploration and that is uh, the wonders with communication you see uh this is you know something wonderful in communication in movies that it pops up new challenges new avenues new possibilities of exploration thank you very much i'll give it a thought definitely thank you very much dr umesh zardai sir for your fruitful informative insightful and enlightening session on films and communication uh, studies a model in the making you literally uh, thrown light on different lights in fact we thoroughly enjoyed and uh, learned a lot uh, from your session thank you very much one and all for your active participation by logging zoom and those who are watching on youtube channel and made this lecture series a grand grand success let's learn all learn and relearn together stay at home stay safe thank you very much for your overwhelming response thank you very much sir thanks to all the participants thanks to uh, the team langley thank you very much dr prashant for all the is all my sir <laughs> thank you yes, thank you very much yes thank, thank you thank you can i leave now yes sir yes thank you leave the meeting now okay. thanks all thank you very much and good day